Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today for this session, which is about building serverless applications with infrastructure as code. If you don't know what infrastructure as code is, don't worry, we're going to get everyone up to speed in a little bit. My name is Talia Nasi, and I'm a senior developer advocate for serverless here at AWS. My job is to build serverless things and then teach the world about them. Before becoming a developer advocate, I was a test engineer for a few years. I worked at companies like Visa, Forbes, and WeWork. I also have my Twitter handle here in case you all want to contact me or follow me for more fun stuff. So today we're going to go through a few topics. First, we're going to talk about infrastructure as code and specifically how it relates to serverless. Then we'll talk about what it means to be a serverless application and what that looks like. We're going to make a template reusable. And when I say template, that's what infrastructure as code is. And then one of the huge benefits of infrastructure as code that we're going to talk about today is reusability. You create a template and then you can put it in different places, use multiple accounts, things like that. And we're, we're then going to prepare for deployment, and then we're going to actually deploy an application at the end and then finish off with a demo. So we have a lot to cover today. So let's get started. So when we say serverless, we mean it's the removal of server operations. And this is important because um, it allows you to focus on the building of the application rather than the management and scaling of the infrastructure to support the application. And there's four tenets that define serverless as an operational model. Firstly, there's no infrastructure to provision or manage. There's no servers to spin up, operate, or patch. Second, serverless applications automatically scale by unit of consumption rather than by server unit. Serverless has a pay for value billing model, which means you only pay for what you use, not for idle time. So if you have an idea that's not taking off, some of them can get expensive. This allows you to experiment more, right? So let's say I have an idea for a new feature and Eric has a competing idea for a new feature. Eric and I can A-B test our features and regardless of which feature has a higher conversion rate, it's not going to cost much because you only pay for what your customers are using. Lastly, serverless applications have built-in availability and fault tolerance, so there's no need to architect for availability because it's built into the service. And this is important because things will break, um, unexpected things happen, data centers have, um, can have outages, you know, there's earthquakes, spaghetti and meatballs can fall from the sky. So what do you do if the servers handling your project fall over? How do you know that all of your versions are in sync with all of your regions? So this is where serverless comes in and takes care of this automatically for you. So serverless applications have built-in availability and fault tolerance, so we've got you covered. So many times when developers start building serverless applications, they start here in the AWS console and you choose the services that you want and then you connect them. So you build your Lambda function here, you choose what you want as a trigger for your Lambda function, you choose as you want what you want for your destination. You can create all the resources you need right there from the console. And this is a really great way to learn. The only problem comes when you want to move your resources to different accounts or you want to move it from one environment to another or just somehow replicate what you've done in the console. And chances are you're not going to know exactly how you set up the resources in the first place and exactly which configurations you set. So to solve this problem, we're going to look outside of the console to templates. And that brings us to infrastructure as code. Templates are a way to store our infrastructure so that it can be reusable. And with infrastructure as code, you're, you're automating the provisioning process. And that means you're not going to go to the console, click on the services you want, create the resources from the, from the console, etc. You're going to use a tool called SAM, which we'll talk about in a minute, and that's going to deploy all of your resources. And so basically we're going to instantiate infrastructure using configuration files. And basically what this means is you have this template with all the steps and configuration for your application that you can reuse whenever you need. And, and we're going to see an example of this in a second. And so this allows you to treat those configuration files as code. Get it? Infrastructure as code. And so 
what do you do with this code? You version it, you put it in some kind of repo in GitHub or code commit or something like that. So you can deploy a version, then work on it, then merge a new version, and you can roll back if you need to. So when you move to infrastructure as code, you can do the same thing with your infrastructure. So if something breaks and your infrastructure isn't working, well, let's roll it back or let's try a new version or let's move it over here to this other environment. Let's, let's figure out what to do. And finally, this allows you to eliminate configuration drift through automation. And this is the classic, well, it worked on my machine shenanigans. So let's say you get paged late one night because there's an incident for your mobile application and you look at the logs and you identify the problem. But in order to fix it, you have to update a specific configuration in production. So you make the change in production and you go back to sleep. Although you fixed the issue, you've just created an even bigger divide between your staging and production environments because you didn't make the same change in your staging environment. So many times staging environments are not the same as production because of changes made during incident management. And this is called configuration drift. So with infrastructure as code, rather than that shift in environments, you have one central authority, which is this template, and then you push the infrastructure changes through. And so now, at AWS, we have several infrastructure as code solutions. The primary one is AWS CloudFormation. A lot of the other ones are built on top of that. The one that we'll mostly talk about today is um, the AWS Serverless Application Model, or SAM. And then there's also the AWS Cloud Development Kit, or CDK, which just allows you to write a little bit more code. So you do have a lot of options here. So again, one of the one of the infrastructure as tool infrastructure as code tools that AWS provides is called SAM, which is the serverless application model. This little guy is Sam the Squirrel. He's the SAM mascot. Um, you're going to be seeing him a lot. So SAM comes in two parts. The first is the AWS SAM templates, which we've already talked about, which allows you to version your infrastructure as code. The second is the AWS SAM CLI, or command line interface. This is a utility that you install on your local machine that helps you with local development, debugging, builds, and deployment for your serverless application. Here's what an example SAM template looks like. It's written in YAML, and you can see that there's a few resources being created here. There's an AWS Lambda function, a DynamoDB table, an API, so I created the Lambda function, I added the corresponding IAM role that lets the Lambda function talk to the DynamoDB table. And um, there's a lot of options when it comes to policies to add to your services, and these SAM templates simplify them for you. So you can change this to a write policy or whatever you need. We're also creating an API from API Gateway. So your event source for your Lambda function here is this HTTP API, and you can, figure these, you can configure these templates to add any AWS resources and create your application. You have a lot of flexibility to build what you want. Think of this as like a shopping list of like, this is exactly what I need in my application. These are the configurations for each resource, and it's all in one place. So with these 20 lines of code, this on the left becomes this on the right. So you have the Lambda function that's triggered by API Gateway. You have the DynamoDB table that stores the data. What's already created for you is the permission for API Gateway to invoke the function. That happens automatically for you in SAM when you set API Gateway as the event source for this Lambda function. And then you added the policy saying you can only read from the table. Now we're going to go through the steps to create a serverless application using SAM templates. The first thing you need to do is install SAM, and you can do that with this link here. Um, there's this handy dandy QR code, or you can go to s12d.com slash SAM install. If you're using uh, Cloud9, you don't need to um, install SAM, it's already installed for you. Once you have SAM installed, the first command you need is to run SAM init. And when you do that, you need to fill out a few things. First, you need to choose what kind of template you want. And we give you some templates to start from, and um, you don't have to build all of this from scratch. So you can do like a simple Hello World application, like the one shown here. You can do a web backend, which we have a template for. We have some, some just things that, that you can pull from. 
Then you have to select your runtime. You can choose Python, Ruby, Go, Java, .NET Core. Maybe you want to use a custom runtime. So there's a lot of options here. Then you need to choose your dependency manager if your runtime requires it. And the result is something like this on the right. So you get the readme with some instructions. You have the events that trigger the Lambda function. Um, and then the hello world folder with all the information about the hello world function. And then you have the template.yaml file, which is the SAM template that will create your resources that we just saw. So the whole goal of infrastructure as code is to make it reusable. If I want to redo something, I want it to be simple. And so why is this? Why do, why do I want it to be simple? Why do I want the template to, to be reusable? Because in an ideal world, everyone would test in production. And if you know me or have heard me speak before, you know how passionate I am about testing in production. But sometimes it's not an option um, and your infrastructure and, and your team is not set up to test in prod. So you have staging environments or test environments in play. And so when we're dealing with serverless, the best practice and something that we talk about a lot is to have one developer account for each developer. So you don't want to share accounts. So you use the same SAM template to do that. So your environments like beta, staging, and production should, should also have their own account, right? So there's this inherent security in this where you're saying only folks who get to deploy to production should have access to production. Same with staging. So that's one thing you get out of it. By breaking these out and using the same templates, you ensure consistency across these environments. I never want to hear it works on my machine um, again, right? Like that's that's not fun. This is great when you're also great when you're onboarding a new developer and they're setting up their environment for the first time and and um, someone gives them like a book of like okay these are the 300 pages of how you get your machine set up versus if you're just using a template you just give them the template and say hey deploy this and you have the entire um, the entire application and it's done and their whole environment is set up with with one command right easy. When you make this template reusable, you're saying you want to use it regardless of which environment you're in. So in order to do that, you parameterize the template. You make it have dynamic values that change based on how you're approaching it. There's a lot of different ways to do this. The first way we can parameterize your template to make it more dynamic is through template parameters. And these are parameters declared through the template itself and will be passed into the Lambda function. These are added or created at update or deploy, and you can't change them. They, they can be typed and validated, and they're stored on the deployment machine. This isn't where you want to keep your secrets. This, this is where you want to keep your environment information. Is it dev? Is it staging or whatever? It's for really simple things, but not for secrets and passwords. The second is environment parameters. These are added at creation or update and stored in open text on the console. So again, not a good place to store secrets because everyone with access to the account can see them. And they're dynamically referenced in the template so that you can grab them through code, but you can't change them. The next thing is the AWS Systems Manager Parameter Store and the AWS Secrets Manager. These are very similar in how they work. So you can add these at creation, update, or runtime. They can be accessed in your code. Um, so if it's something that you need to grab at every invoke, then this might be a good place to store them. The Systems Manager Parameter Store works um, for some resources, not all. And the Secrets Manager is a really good place to store your secrets, and it works with a lot more resources. The final way is through app config. App config allows you to set configurations for your Lambda functions. We also have this really cool thing we released called extensions, and this is good if you want to change something a lot, but you don't want it to call, you don't want to call it every single time a Lambda function is invoked. The other way of parameterizing your templates is through functions and parameters. So CloudFormation has the idea of, in, of um, intrinsic functions and allows you to insert logic into your templates. And you can do some conversion like base64, you can substitute things, um, you can substitute strings, um, do things like that. So there's a lot of ways you can grab dynamic values as needed. Then we have what's called pseudo parameters where you need to reference what region you're in. You don't know how to hard, you don't want to necessarily hard code that because sometimes you don't know 
what the region is. So instead you can use a pseudo parameter like AWS region, same with like account number and, and all the rest of these that are listed. Okay, so now we have our template. We know, um, we know exactly the resources we wanna deploy. Um, so now we want to deploy, right? So SAM CLI has this handy dandy little command called SAM build. And there's a lot of things that happen when you run SAM build. First of all, you can build with native runtimes. You can also do a custom build using a make file, and this gives you a lot of flexibility, right? So um, you, can, you can use the native runtime, you can use a custom runtime. Um, and then again, just to note, a lot of the runtimes are supported by containers. So if you do SAM build dash dash use container, then you'll grab a container that's based on the environment that the Lambda function will run in, and it's gonna build that out for you. You can also pass a cached or a parallel flag. And so the cached flag will say, hey, cache this build. So let's say I have 10 Lambda functions and I make a change to just one of them. When I do the build, nine of them will be cached, but only one would need rebuilding. And this makes the build much, much faster. Um, you can also build in parallel. So now I can say, um, dash dash parallel and it'll build them at the same time and so this makes local development much faster you can also do omission if you want to omit certain files so again this gives you a lot of flexibility and then when you run sam build it creates a separate folder and isolates each of the functions into their own build it takes all of the dependencies based in the dependencies manifest and it's going to grab everything you need for that lambda function to work and then it's going to zip it up and push it out or if you're using a container image it will create a local image and push it to an amazon ecr repository when you run sam build or sam package later okay so what have we done up till now we've created our application prepared our template to work across multiple environments and we've learned how to build the application and prepare it for deployment so our application is ready to go so how do we deploy it all we're going to do is go to the sam cli and run sam deploy so sam deploy deploys or updates serverless applications in the aws cloud it manages the S3 bucket for deployment artifacts. It saves all of the deployment options to a configuration file. And then when it does the deploy, it creates a CloudFormation change set. And what a CloudFormation change set is, is it's basically a diff of what was there and what's there now. And so it compares the template to what's already out there. If it's a brand new deploy, it's just gonna deploy everything. If it's not a brand new deploy, then it only updates the changes or it'll kick it back if there's a problem and say, hey, this isn't gonna work. And we're gonna see this um, in a minute when I, when I do the demo. So you can use SAM to deploy multiple environments and we, we just saw all of the steps in, um, of, of how to do this. And now let's see it in action, right? So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna build um, a qu quick application and so in this scenario, anytime an item is added to a DynamoDB table, the invoked Lambda function logs the event in Amazon CloudWatch log. So we're gonna add an item to DynamoDB, that's gonna invoke a Lambda function that's gonna log the event into Amazon CloudWatch logs. Okay, so to build our application, we're going to head to serverlessland.com slash patterns and use one of the predefined SAM templates. On the left hand side, we're going to filter patterns by DynamoDB and then choose DynamoDB to Lambda. Then we're going to click on the download text to copy the commands to the clipboard. Then in your terminal, you're going to paste the download instructions. Um, this is just, this just clones the repo and then changes the directory to the right place. Once we're in the right folder, you're gonna run sam deploy dash dash guided. And so this deploys your application. And this is gonna, this is, this is what we were talking about before. You're gonna see the change set. Also, I'm, I'm leaving uh, the responses blank here because I, I just want the default options. And so this is going to take a few minutes, but you can see our resources 
um, are going to be deployed, right? So it says waiting for change set to be created. And so this, since this is the first time that I'm deploying this application, everything is going to be deployed uh, for the first time. So you can see all of our resources here. So if I was if I was updating something, it would say update in progress. But here, since uh, since this is the first time I'm deploying this application, it's creating everything for the first time. And once it's done, you get the success message that your stack has been created. So now let's test this thing. Let's head over to the DynamoDB console. We're going to click on tables, and then we're going to choose our newly created table that was just created for us um, in this stack. We're going to add an item to this table, and we're going to name it, what, you can name this whatever you want. So I'm going to call this banana, and so I've added this new item to this table. So now we're going to head over to the Lambda console. We're going to head to our newly created Lambda function. Again, this was deployed uh, just now. And we're going to scroll down to the Monitor tab and choose View Logs in CloudWatch. And we're going to look for this new image that was inserted into the DynamoDB table. We're going to look for Banana, because that's what I called it. And there it is. So anytime a new item is added to our DynamoDB table, this Lambda function is invoked and logs the event in Amazon CloudWatch logs. So you can see that with just a few lines of, our, of um, the template, it deployed all of the resources we needed for our application um, and, and we were able to test this out in the console. So we have a ton of content and learning opportunities, including the entire serverless patterns collection on serverlessland.com. So be sure to visit, um, if you haven't already, serverless land is also where the patterns live. Um, it's the, one of the patterns I use today, DynamoDB to Lambda. There's so many different patterns out there. Um, that will that already have the SAM templates written for you. So if you don't know where to start with infrastructure as code, the patterns collection is a really great place to do that. Um, it's it's a really great learning tool that developers can use to learn about serverless and infrastructure as code. Um, so if you haven't looked at the patterns collection, uh, I highly recommend that you do. Thank you all so much for joining me in our journey through Infrastructure as Code. Again, my name is Talia Nasi. Here's my Twitter handle. Um, thank you so much, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.